Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Call. Every Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock Pacific, we're here to deliver the industry's absolute best weekly sales meeting. My name is Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach. I urge you to connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Tumblr. Uh, you're on this call. If you're part of our family. And uh, if you have questions, if you have guests that you want me to bring into the call, let me know. Let's have a conversation. Uh, do want to remind remind everybody there's a lot of ways you can connect with the Mortgage Coach community on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Uh, we are now sending out a weekly, or excuse me, a monthly calendar. So at the beginning of the year, who we're going to have on all our Tuesday coaching calls, a reminder about our Thursday calls, and now every single Friday we're doing a basic training on Mortgage Coach. So if you're new to Mortgage Coach, it's a place to go and get started. And heck, if you're not new but you want to get started and get a refresher, it's a great place. Every Friday, 9 o'clock Pacific. If you did not get this email, that means you probably have us going into a spam filter or we don't have the right email address. So unblock us, check your spam filter, make sure you're getting this email, and we will keep you updated about everything that's going on in Mortgage Coach Land. Every one of these coaching calls is recorded. It's put into our YouTube uh, channel. Make sure you, select, you click that you subscribe to this so you get automatic alerts. Last week's call from uh, Rick Rumma, you know, just an awesome loan officer doing you know, 50 loans a month for the past five years, so just a, a mega producer. Uh, Todd, I don't know if you heard that call, but uh, this guy really, he's doing a lot of things right. I think it's the third time I've interviewed Rick. If you haven't, um, if you missed the call, make sure you go listen to the recording. Todd, you weren't by any chance on the call, were you? I wasn't on last week because I was on a plane to Seattle. That's right. That's right. Well, we'll have to remind you to go check it out. <laughs> All right. I also want to remind everybody, we for the past few weeks, we've been putting notes in our uh, Mortgage Coach community at LinkedIn. Uh, our success coach, Jeremy, is doing a training today. So we're not going to put notes in, but I want to shout out to the community. Put your biggest takeaway in or forward me your notes, but we want to get your takeaways and your notes in our uh, LinkedIn community page. And of course, we've got lots of action in Facebook um, this week. Frankly, Frank Blakely, um, who's been a guest on a number of coaching calls. I've, I've actually had Frank on stage with me at Sales Mastery and different events. Just an awesome mortgage coach leader. And Frank, thanks for the shout out, uh, letting us know how much you appreciate these coaching calls. Uh, one last thing, Frank, if you do have any suggestions, on guests that I bring in for the Tuesday call. Uh, even if you want to, you, you yourself, you know, you're, you qualify to be a leader in this community. If you have a big idea or you know someone else we need to bring in, let me know, Frank. And thanks for keeping the conversation alive on Facebook. So today our special guest is Mr. Todd Bookspan. Todd, welcome to the call. Uh, thanks, Dave. It's really an honor to be here. Well, it's an honor to have you on this call. You're a great industry leader and one of the, the, the loan officers that does, does things right in every way in this business. And I'm really looking forward to pulling out the genius of what you do and unpacking, unpacking that for the mortgage coach community. Perfect. I will, uh, I will try to unpack some genius for you. All right, man. Well, I'll pull it out of you, brother, and I know it's going to be good. So before I officially bring Todd in, I want to do a bit of a debrief on some past few calls. We had Mr. Um, Tom Ferry on a call a few weeks ago, and, and he said something that was pretty profound, and, and he shared what you know, the problems and challenges are of the biggest realtors. And I talked about this a little bit last week. I want to talk about it a little differently this week, and then we'll also bring this into Todd's conversation a little bit. But what is costing realtors more money than they realize, and you can help them fix it? Now, Tom made the point that the most successful realtors, the 5%, the elite of the elite, their biggest challenge is organization. It's not leads. So if you're talking to a realtor and their biggest problem is leads, it's probably not one of you know the absolute apex realtors because they've got lots of leads. It's about conversion. It's about being efficient. It's about being effective. And, and of course, they still want leads. And, and then the other thing that we uncovered in that call is that helping them have a better lead conversion. Every single realtor has a challenge converting leads. They do it worse than we do, and we can help them. So I want to I want to pull up and remind everybody of some questions that Jeremy Forcier came up with uh, in, in one of the coaching calls a few weeks back. Again, top loan officer who jet closes 20 loans a month, generates more than 60 leads a month, 
and is always managing a funnel of pre-quals north of uh, 150. So what are five questions Jeremy asked that help him uncover that problem for that specific realtor? And the five, and by the way, th this is on the YouTube, so a little four minute snippet from that coaching call, so you don't have to listen to the whole coaching call. You can get this on YouTube and hear it right from Jeremy. But the five questions he's asking every realtor is he starts the conversation, where are you having success today? What are your biggest pain or challenges? So he asks a great pleasure questions that he, that's easy to answer. Then he brings it down to what is your pain? What are the three things you need from a lender? What do you currently, um, you know, what do you currently need, want better from your lending relationship? And then he makes a unique and valuable promise that's tailored to that realtor, and it's something that he uncovered, and it's something he can deliver on. So. Sometimes he just offers more deals. If I could show you how to close a few more transactions with your current database, would that be interesting? Right now, Jeremy is using this value proposition. If you refer to home buyer to me and I can actually improve the conversion rate and actually make it more efficient by saving a few calls, would that be interesting? And I'm going to bring Jeff Nunley in because Jeff brought up a great um, promise that he's making is if I could turn your referral if you're, every referral you gave to me into a few introductions, QCPAs, few financial planners, would that be interesting? So um, Jeff Nunley, before we bring in Mr. Todd Bookspan, you got a minute or two just to share what you're doing and the promise that you're making that was inspired from the call with Jeremy. Mr. Jeff Nunley, what are you doing, my man? Well, and it actually came, uh, well, first of all, hi. <laughs> Uh, this actually came from uh, from the last two conversations we've had. Uh, we Jeremy's well, Jeremy's video, and then uh, last week listening to uh, listening to Tom talk a little bit about uh, how important it was to help improve convert conversion ratio and and uh, just the the cost of doing business for realtors that lead conversion and how important that is. And it began to get really clear. I've been working with a lot of new agents, and I've been on and off uh, when I feel is appropriate, showing them page five, our page five of the application, where we simply ask somebody who they use for their insurance, who they use for uh, who their legal advisor is, maybe their financial advisor, and essentially get their permission to contact them and thereby, of course, get a referral to that advisor. And so I began realizing after talking to some of these people that Realtors, financial advisors, financial planners, stockbrokers, insurance agents, there's no other industry that learns how to do this. And it's so simple and so powerful. So my question became if we could show you a strategy that could increase your lead to conversion ratio, lower your cost of lead acquisition, help you network with lots of legal and financial professional professionals on a referral basis, and increase the average size of your transaction where we have a basis of doing business together. It's a big process, but right. those are the things that page five is capable of doing for people. It's capable of doing it for us, and that's the reason it's, it can be so transformational. That's why Todd Duncan, of course, puts it in his 90, makes it a focal point of his 90-day burn, and, uh, and it's something that nobody else has ever seen. Literally every advisor, every realtor, anybody I've ever shown this to, they just look at it and they just say it's complete genius. So it's a, it's a powerful promise. I mean, I love it because this is a great challenger sales strategy. Let's face it, every loan officer is calling on every realtor in America making similar promises. They sound the same. You know, they sound like the blah, blah loan officer. I work hard. I'm consistent. I have great rates. And this is, a, this is something that realtors have not heard, so it's unique. This is something that you can deliver on. It's not a false promise. And, and heck, in the meeting with the realtor, you can even show them how your advice is unique, you know, with the Mortgage Coach mobile app and some of the visuals that you use for story selling. So, so Mortgage Coach community will talk more about this. I want to, you know, Jeff, I appreciate you championing, you know, putting the post on Facebook around how you were inspired by the past, past few calls, how it's helped you really fine tune the promise that you're making. Uh, you know, please. Keep some success stories coming, Jeff, and let's, uh, I'll bring you into a few more calls in the coming weeks as you have some realtors that really uh, bite into this and who you deliver on.
Oh, absolutely. You know, it's uh, it's great because you can show it in five to ten minutes, blow people away, and I always finish the conversation with 90% of the people that I work with, 95% of the people I show it to uh, are going to go back and they're never going to use it. And you brought up a great idea, which was uh, basically tell them that we are using it and we have the ability when they refer somebody to us to work them back into all those people and they don't even have to do it. Exactly. Every time someone... A realtor gives you a referral, they get a great mortgage, um, great mortgage options, and they're going to get a few referrals back to some CPAs, financial planners, and good partners. Thanks again, Jeff, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Hey, so, so Todd, it's time for the main show. We've got 50 full minutes to interview you. Any, any comments or color you want to provide around that strategy or some of the follow-ups from last week before I bring you officially into the call and do an interview with you? Well, that's what I love about the community, right? What I love about the community is that you've got so many great originators from all over the country that are willing to share their best ideas, right? And that's, I think that's a challenge out there. Um, you know, we've been trying to put together a local mastermind one of my loan officers has, and it's funny because she's been forwarding me some texts from um, a local competitor who's a super guy, and he just, he's funny. He just doesn't want to share right now what he's got, what he's got going on, and we all see it. We all know what he's doing, but why not then? Um, share that with the other people or your competitors, and then learn learn back from them as well. Because in the end, no matter how good you think you are, you can always learn from you know from those around you, whether they're um, you know new in the business, a mid level producer, a top producer. You know, everyone's got great ideas, and I kind of think that the, the the big tool that we all have at our disposal are all of you know the, is the content library that you create you know week in and week out. And I think that's where you know my strategy always is you know. 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time Tuesdays is a challenging time for me um, to be on a webinar, but um, I've got plenty of other time in my life where I can um, zoom back online and then actually uh, watch and learn. Well, it's good to have you in the community, my friend. Uh, so for folks that don't know who you are, which I know a lot of people do because you, you've got a lot of friends in the industry and in the community, you know, you've always been a leader who I've respected, and when I see you at events, I'm you know, every time I talk to you, I get a great idea, and I also uh, always walk away with, wow, this guy is focused, this guy's got his game together, you just, you always inspire me with um, the integrity you bring to this business. Uh, if you could share what market you're in, a little bit about your production numbers for folks who don't know you on the call. Sure, sure, I'm a, I'm a I guess technically a regional recruiting manager in Arizona, so I'm a, I'm a producing manager, uh, my my office is in Scottsdale, Arizona, and uh, live here in Phoenix. And it's uh, you know it's a great market to be in. It seems like you know we we seem to ride the waves up and up and down. You know, I think I was on a call about about two years ago, really at the right when Harp was getting ready to kick off, and you know that was really uh, made 2012 a great year for us. We closed uh, about 417 units for. Uh, about $81 million that year. I was about 50-50, like 51% purchase, 49% refi. Um, but it was a huge year of growth. You know, I'd gone from really being a 200 loan a year, $30 million producer, and jumped up to over 80, which which was awesome. But then I um, really knew that as Harp was starting to fizzle out, I'd never been a huge refi guy that had to get back and make sure that I was focused on the on the the real long-term strategy, which was um, adding more realtor relationships. So we, we maintained what we had through HARP. We didn't ignore that group. I kept a refi team and built a purchase, or I have kept my purchase team in place, and I built a refi team to get through it. I um, was really proud of our numbers in 2013. We didn't go up a ton. We grew a little bit, about 442 loans um, for just shy of $85 million. Um, but the real number that I was most proud of is that went from that almost 50-50 mix to 80% uh, purchase last year. And uh, so it was really a great, uh, a great move for us. Well, I'm looking forward to unfolding the strategies that you implemented. That's another thing that I, every time I talk to you, you have like a big strategy, a big vision for the year that you're executing. And I, I know you put a lot of thought into that. So when Todd tells you, you know, what did he do last year? What's he going to do this year? I, I think it's something worth, worth really thinking about in your own market. So when I, I did my research for this call, and I, I do this all the time. I, I think a lot of people do now that when you're getting ready to talk to someone or meet something, see, so you Google them. So you know, I Google Todd Bookspan, and the first thing I look at is you know web links, and I'm like, wow, this guy's busy, man. He's got his own 
He's got a mortgage company link. He's got a Facebook link. He's got a great LinkedIn link. A Yelp. He's got a Yelp link with, with 13 reviews. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I, I, I don't see that every time I'm researching a loan officer. And then, and then I click on images. So again, this is just what Google showed. I, I went, I put in Todd Bookspan, I clicked on images, which is part of how I always research anybody um, to see how intentional they are and how successful they are in terms of their online presence. Uh, you know, everybody knows me. I'm not some guy that says, hey, everybody needs to be out there with a big social strategy. I still see 90% of the loan officers that are participating in social as it's entertainment. You know, and hey, as long as you keep entertainment in check and you realize that when you're, you're on Facebook and all these tools, it's entertainment. It's not necessarily business. As long as you understand that, it's okay. But I do believe everybody needs a great digital presence. And I do believe, and I know because I bring in people um, like Dan Keller and great loan officers that are using social and they're making money with it. But they're very specific strategies. Now, Todd, in your case, I, I, this is kind of my first question before we really get into the heart of some of our questions. You, you have a really awesome online presence. How much of this is intentional? How much of this is coincidence? And, and, and which, you know, all this real estate radio stuff, how does this fit into your overall approach? Well, you know, I would say that probably I'd lie if I said it was all intentional. You know, I do have a, a full-time uh, marketing assistant who, who does a great job, and I don't think it's really a – a strategy that we've fully uh, taken advantage of and really made it one of our competitive advantages. Um, you know, certainly from uh, the radio perspective, I've, I was one of the first on the real estate radio network. I think I've probably done now over 150 shows with real estate radio, and you know, ironically, having all that audio out there and having you know top uh, realtors in my market on there and having it linked back to their websites and you know all that. Uh, synergy between uh, those folks uh, has really continued to add to our ability to be found online. Uh, you mentioned Yelp. It was funny. I had a good friend who emailed me on, on Yelp this week. I mean, Yelp has been one of those things. I don't take credit for it. My business partner, Matt Baker, was uh, early on with uh, early on a big proponent of, of Yelp. But really that whole social, uh, you know, what is what are your friends, what are the other people out in the community saying about you? We can all say great things about ourselves. Um, but in the end, people know that we're all in the business of sales. And so to be able to have other people say good things, we just had that happen. Uh, it's probably been a few weeks now, but I had a, a client who called me, and he was referred to multiple lenders, and we were one of them. Uh, but then when he went online and saw that one of our five-star Yelp reviews was from one of his friends, then it was a done deal. He was, he was using us, you know, rate. None of the other things really were a question at that time. Well, whatever you're doing, it's working. I, I, I put a, a shout out there and a homework assignment for everybody to put your name into Google and see what comes up. Uh, again, don't make this your number one priority. Just be very intentional around what is your online presence. And when people check you out, what comes up? And in the case of Todd Bookspan, a lot of, a lot of awesome stuff comes up. And it's pretty obvious and pretty clear that you, you are a stud in your marketplace. So, by the way, well, I've had a number – oh, go, go ahead, Todd. No, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm looking. My computer keeps dying in and out, so I just uh, logged in. But I do have to, I do have to point out that uh, there's – nice in a picture with my wife comes up there on the, on the top towards the left. And at the very bottom right is my, uh, my daughter, Giselle, my 11-year-old, who is uh, my most popular guest whenever she comes on my show. I try to look back and do a show that's without a real estate guest where I really just talk what's going on in the mortgage market, you know, typically every three to six months, and uh, she's my – uh, my my most popular guest when she comes on. Well, that's a that's a beautiful thing. Got the whole family involved. Uh, by the way, a number of people have put questions in around Jeremy's five questions. I want to just tell you, those are in our YouTube page. Just go check it out. They're there. So uh, I, questions keep coming in on that. I just want to make sure everybody knows where those are at. So so Todd, let's uh, let's just get right to it. Where are you getting most of your business from? Uh, we're really connected in the real estate community. You know, there's no, um, you know, for me, you know, I, it's it's the low-hanging fruit, right? We all know that right now when you, uh, you know, when you think who's got 
people right now who need mortgages, we know it's the realtors. Um, certainly, we got a, a large percentage of our business last year from our database. We don't ignore database. Um, certainly, I've got the CPAs, the financial advisors, and the others out there, but that's just more of a longer-term strategy. And so, you know, when I'm going back and I'm coaching other loan officers, uh, you know, we're practicing what I preach. I mean, we're, we are absolutely uh, focused on adding value to realtors. So, so it's all about realtors. I, I noticed, I asked you to send me a few, few uh, pictures of your office, and I noticed you included this uh, cool picture of this bell. What does that represent? You know, that's, um, that's our bell, and I, you know, again, I credit Matt Baker for that. You know, we, uh, and actually credit Bill Hart for Building Champions for encouraging Matt Baker to get that bell. Um, you know, really, we, you know, as I've grown the production and gotten um, into management, you know, having a team is such an important piece, and, and part of having a team is adding, is adding culture. And so um, it's not the most popular thing amongst the rest of the loan officers in my office that every time we get an application, uh, contract or we fund a loan that we're, we're ringing the bell. And then, uh, and then there will be those times where Matt cranks up, uh, I think it was like Diana Ross or someone singing Ring My Bell. And, and uh, you know, we, we try to have fun with it as often as we can, but I did think that that was, you know, offices are just offices, but I thought that that was, um, you know, something unique that we've really done to try to add a little bit of fun into our day. I'm sure we're not the only people out there with a bell. And when you order a bell online, that bell's five inches round. It doesn't sound like it's very big, but it's, it's really loud. You can hear it all over our, you know, almost 9,000 square foot office when it rings. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, so by the way, you mentioned 9,000 square foot office. How many folks are on your team? Um, you know, my team is now uh, has crept over uh, over a dozen. Now we're we're actually approaching 14 people uh, because we've added as we've added these. Uh, we're really geared up to make 2014 even a bigger year. You know, really for me, it's it's increasing the level of service. So I've got uh, full time business development person. I've got full-time marketing. I've got uh, two people on my team who pre-underwrite loans. So one's a former underwriter, one's a former processor. One of them kind of acts as our team captain. And so they are, um, you know, right up front. I really believe that that's one of the pieces that most loan officers miss it on is that they're doing a mediocre job at the pre-approval stage. They collect documents and they sort of look at it. But, you know, I know some great technical loan officers, but in the end, if I'm really doing my job of, of going out there and and, uh, and consulting with realtors and consulting with clients, I'm not the best person to sit there and sift through tax returns and look at all that stuff. I see so many uh, deals that go sideways from, from loan officers who just, if they would have spent a little bit more time, uh, someone else on their team would have spent more time paying attention to a couple pieces of paper, they would have avoided the problem that they ran into well before the person ever went under contract. And so um, I've got two people now on my team that can pre-underwrite uh, pre -underwrite those loans. Um, my business partner, Matt Baker, and then we've got uh, seven licensed uh, loan officers now on our team. We really, uh, we've doubled the size. We used to have three in our office, and now we've got uh, seven, and we're really focused on um, digging in with those uh, Realtor relationships this year. Got it, got it. So when you think of prospecting and you're going out there to you know, prospect, and whether this is you personally or your team, your group, you know, what are your rhythms? What are, the, what are the daily rhythms, the weekly rhythms to feed this engine and to achieve this kind of success? Well, I think it all starts with knowing your numbers, right? If you don't know your conversion rate, then you don't really know how many people you have to have. And so one of the things that I really dug in, you know, we built a system that's really, you know, for me to carry around a piece of paper, like I was tracking my phone calls yesterday. Uh, my goal this week is to uh, personally call 125 uh, realtors slash referral partners. And, you know, that's a, a could be a big and daunting number, but I'm, I'm focused on that number. I, I believe if I call 125 people, I'll probably have about 100 conversations. And so I'm tracking it. Who am I calling? What's the follow-up? And so um, a piece of paper for most loan officers is something that you're going to lose at some point, either today or tomorrow, uh, if you haven't lost it before then. And so we track it through our system and we're really able to track. You know, I know exactly how many leads I need to get an application. I know exactly how many applications I need to issue a, a true pre-approval letter. I know how many pre-approvals I need in order to hit my final closing numbers that, you know, that we're shooting for. And so, um, so that's what we're hyper-focused on. You know, my team members all have a personal goal of what they want to earn this year. And so 
I have to take on that responsibility of helping design a plan that works for them. And so, um, like my right hand, David, you know, he knows that he's got to he's got to get uh, four leads today and two applications today in order to hit his numbers. And, and David's the kind of guy that's not a clock puncher. Um, he's going to work until until he gets those uh, you know his numbers done. And in the end. Uh, he's also a family man, and, and his wife Kelly will kill him and me if he's not home for dinner. And so, you just learn you just learn to be more hyper focused. And so, for me, I spend my time, um, you know, practicing what I preach. So I'm making my calls to, uh, coaching my team to make their calls, um, coaching the loan officers on our branch to make their calls and do their thing. So for us, our daily rhythm is just making sure that you know we know the activities that we need to do. I think, you know, success leaves clues. You know, I don't know who said that long ago, but it's it's certainly true. And, um, just already on this call before I got on it, there's a ton of um, success, a ton of nuggets that that people um, have left that you just shared, you know, prior to that. So um, our rhythm is, you know, so today's Tuesday update call, um, and so we have a thing here that we're required by Arizona contract to send out called an LSU a loan status update, and uh, most loan officers don't ever send it out unless they're asked for it. You're required to actually send it out five days within. Uh, getting a contract, and then you're required to send it out every time that a realtor asks for it, and most of the time, loan officers just make it up. Um, and so we built a system into our CRM that tracks all the things that have to go on to that LSU, and then I've got um, an assistant on my team, and that is her job. She has to herd the cats. Every Tuesday, she sends out the LSUs. I already saw the email before I got on the call that the LSUs have been sent, and then now her job is to make sure that everyone on the team makes those, those update calls. But um, you know, that's a great rhythm, right? Updating the people who you're doing business with on what's going on in the transaction uh, that you're doing. Um, Pre-approval calls, we'll be doing pre-approval calls the next two days. All the people, you know, we've got a big pre-approved um, client base. We took 116 loan applications in January, and we got a lot of people that are pre-approved that need to uh, go under contract, but we know that realtors don't do a great job of following up with their clients. And so if we don't do a great job of following up with those clients on behalf of us and our realtor partners that they're not going to do it. So it's just a matter of, um, for us, our best tool um, on a daily basis, day in and day out, is our phone and, and knowing who to call and when to call them. Makes, makes a lot of sense. So I want to break this down a couple ways and make it actionable, whether you have a team or whether you're an individual loan officer. Because let's face it, while you have a mega team and you are a, you know, you are a franchise player loan officer, uh, Within your group and your organization, you've got a lot of individual loan officers that don't have their first assistant, and loan officers that are struggling to get past five loans a month. Which, in my mind, you know that is the that is where you are a sustainable loan officer. You're closing five loans consistently. So let's let's bake your cake first of all. So you're you're making 125 realtor calls. You're having 100 conversations. How many leads a week do you want to generate? Um. You know, we just upped that number. I'd have to pull on my spreadsheet. I think the number is um, we're looking for 40 leads a day right now. Um, so it's a huge number, right? We've uh, part of it's because I built a big team, right? We made we did those numbers last year really off of having a team that was less than half the size, and now I got a big team. And you know, quite frankly, we got to produce at a higher level. Yeah, no, that's okay. We're gonna break. It. We're gonna see what you do, and then we're gonna break it down. And then, how many loans do you want to close a, a week or a month? What's the number? Um. Our, our minimum bar going forward is going to be, we, we averaged 38 loans a month last year, and so you know, our minimum bar is to close over 40, but we're really, we're really ramping up. I've got a team that should be able to close 60 to 70 units a month. Okay, so the goal is 60 to 70. Again, this is a mega producer. Now, you have, you have individual loan officers within your organization, and I, I always say, hey, if you're closing less than three loans a month, or let, let's just say less than five, because five is a sustainable number where, hey, I've got a mortgage practice, I'm successful. I'm making a good living. Um, you can start to get to the point where you're you're one step away from possibly building, getting an assistant. You can make 20 prospecting calls a day. What is the minimum number when you think of prospecting rhythms for loan officers that are closing less than five loans that do not have a team? What do you see as the minimum number of um, prospecting calls they should be making daily and weekly? You know, I, I like 20 a day, right? I think you can make 100 calls in a week. And still do the rest of your job, and you know it's um, you know I've been coached by Building Champions for ten years. I'm uh, really uh, lucky to be part of the Masters Coach Program and surrounded by um, some amazing people. And you know the the real key with you know the time blocking, uh, which is just at the basic of you know how to manage manage your priorities, is you know the time blocking piece. And you know going back to it, you know certainly if you work by yourself and you've got 
loans that you need to work on because um, you don't have an assistant who can pre-work on that loan for you. I, I coach loan officers to do that first thing in the morning. You know, most of the time, our, when we're in sales, our brains are freshest in the morning. Um, we can control our day a little bit more in the morning. And so really before the realtors are up and out of bed and your clients are, you know, they're just at work, is, you know, spend that first hour or two working on your loans. Um, and then after that, then dig right into those right into those prospecting calls because normally by that point, again, your day still hasn't gotten crazy and away from you. Um, and then you've got your whole afternoon to, um, you know, if a problem pops up to deal with it, then you've got your whole afternoon to schedule your appointments. And so part of it is, I think, is just, you know, what is the ideal day for you and then how can you squeeze those activities that you know you need to do into your day. And I always say, if you're not doing the first thing in the morning, the likelihood of getting it done um, is slim. And it's the same for me with my phone calls, you know, the, you know, this morning I met with our operations manager and my wife, and then I'm uh, on the call, and then I've got a recruiting call right after this, and then I'm heading in the office. So I'm already starting behind what I know is my ideal schedule. But um, I'll get in there, I'll walk the floor, say hello, answer questions, um, you know, to the loan officers in the branch and, and to my team, and then um, I'll quietly shut the door. I'll put up my um, Darren Hardy bubble of science silence post-it note that I put on my door, and then people know that I'm doing what it is I need to do, which in this case will be making my phone calls. Got it. So strong prospecting rhythms creates is, is the heart of your program. So let's talk about your sales process and the tools that you use. So sure. when I, whenever I look at the sales process in the mortgage industry, there's 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 marketing, and yes, there are a lot of processes within marketing that take place and tools. There's conversion, there's the production, and there's retention. And you know this is a mortgage coach call. Obviously, you use Edge. That's one of your tools. I noticed from the picture that you sent me, you had Rate Watch in the background. So Absolutely. obviously, obviously, use Rate Watch. And there's other tools. In fact, I know a lot of people have asked on this call, you know, what CRM are you using? So if you wouldn't mind, you know, walking us through your sales process a little bit and share what tools you're using in the process. Sure. You know, it's certainly from you know, obviously, Edge is a tool that I've used, and uh, you know, I always tell you every time. I think you're tired of my story, or maybe you're not, but yeah, I'm not. When I got into business in um, 2001, my first day I showed up for work, they took me to a mortgage originator magazine seminar where uh, Mark Klein talked about Mortgage Coach, and I convinced my company to buy it that day so I could use it. So I literally have used Mortgage Coach since the day I got into business, and um, you know I just love you know the total cost analysis to me is is a great tool. Uh, my CRM is um, I went straight to Salesforce.com and then I custom built out. Our version of it. One of the things that I realized is is that uh, you know I, I, there's certain things that um, don't really care from a detail perspective, and there's certain things I do care about. And so, um, Salesforce is actually pretty easy to customize. Um, I've got a. Um, I know you guys do a lot with um, MPC Mortgage Planner CRM, which is a Salesforce platform. I've got a lot of loan officers in my office on that product. It's a really good place for most people to start. Um, you know, my team was just a little bit bigger than that, and so. Um, we built more into that piece so that we could truly run the reports within there to track all these these things that, um, from a leader's perspective, are important for me to track, but are also really important um, when, whatever your CRM is to track as an individual um, loan officer. So yeah, everything that, goes in there. Yeah, I just want to jump in, and everybody, I mean, you know we're big believers um, in Mortgage Planner Pro. It integrates with Edge. But as I always say, the best CRM, it's the CRM that you use. And so, you, you know, it's a CRM that actually you use, and if you have a team, your team uses it. And uh, so, I just want to make sure that's emphasized. What are what are some of the other tools that you're using that are really critical to your sales process? Um, you know, I mean, really, from tools that are critical to the sales process, those are you know, those are the ones that we really use. We also, as a company, use Top of Mind for um, our sales CRM, so that all of our you know compliance I actually view as a competitive advantage. You know, it's um, it's I think one of the biggest frustrations right now for loan officers. You know, you guys said it earlier on the call that every realtor that we have is getting hit up. Um, every realtor that we've had, you know, they could be your best friend for the last 20 years. That person is getting hit up, and they're getting given re you know really nice things. They're getting great gifts and and uh, promise lots of stuff. And you know what? Ironically, not all of it's RESPA compliant. And so, um, you know, we've had uh, your buddy Ken Perry. Just uh, spoke to at our football sales meeting last week. And, you know, I love Ken, and you know, we spent a ton of time talking about RESPA. And so, um, you know, compliance top of mind. We that's where we pump uh, our marketing through because of the fact that you know certainly uh, the compliance piece is really good. 
Um, we're currently on points for our loan origination system. Um, Cobalt's in the process of um, getting ready to change that, um, to change that over. And then, um, you know, for the retention piece, you know, we are using a combination of top of mind and then, you know, Salesforce, because Salesforce has, is our, really our core storage for our database. Um, and so we're, we got uh, multiple systems, which gets confusing, but in the end, um, you know, we know where to stay focused. Right on. Well, again, you're with a great company, Cobalt. They, 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 I know they, they invest a lot for great technology and they're building a great platform out. So let's just break it down. So from a marketing standpoint, um, top of mind in Salesforce, from a selling, converting the sale, the Edge TCA, also Rate Watch is part of how you're being an expert so that you deliver that great advice. You're currently using Point to take the 10 of the 3, which is pushing it through, and then from a retention standpoint, all of your tools. Um, or by the way, are you doing annual reviews? I had Edge there because I, I thought in previous calls that you, you do an annual review and you use Edge for that. Is that the you case? Know, that's one of those things where it, you know, it's kind of embarrassing. You know, I was looking through, um, you know, I would say that when I looked through our historically, because it was fun to prep for the call and hit view all and edge and see, you know, literally hundreds of edge reports that we've created for people over time. And um, it was fun to go through and realize just how many we're, we're producing that are, you know, not, I wouldn't call them proactive annual reviews as much as I'd like to lie and tell everyone that we're great and we're doing that um, on a proactive basis like we should be. But um, they're, they're reactive ones, meaning that we got the, we got the, mortgage statement from our client who called in to check on rates because they heard their friend talking about how good rates are or, you know, the news blasted out because, you know, rates crept down, you know, uh, and a little tiny bit and they made it sound like that rates dropped to their historic lows again. Um, and so we have, we have a lot of reactive annual reviews you're doing, but, you know, when I talked to you and Brian, um, I wrote really big on, in my notebook, and I put stars all around it that um, we absolutely will by next month have an annual review process where we're proactively reaching out to, you know, every client. Just, I mean, in the last two years, I got 800 people now in my database that um, I've let down because I haven't been proactive with it. So um, I've already kind of designed out what the email looks like, what I'm going to drop in the mail to them, um, how I'm going to present the TCA. Um, the video piece of it's really important. Um, you know, looking at, looking at uh, my sales process, um, putting a video in there is, uh, important for a ton of reasons. The biggest is because then I can actually tell them what I want to tell them without them, um, with, without them getting me off track and maybe me forgetting to go back and tell them a piece of it. But more importantly, oftentimes, you know, we all see when someone you get your email notification on an edge report that they looked at it at midnight, and at midnight when they have questions, they're not there to call you. And when you record that video, you've you've probably already answered that question that they would have had you recorded one, and so you don't have to worry about. Um, them potentially reaching out to somebody else to ask that question, you know, maybe the company that runs 24-hour uh, customer service uh, or something, you know, something along those lines, you know, you're still their expert. Yeah, well, I, I guess I would, I would add to the video for everybody, everybody on this call who comes to these calls regularly, you know how I feel about it, and you know all the success stories that come out around, you know, tons of reasons to put the video, but one of the best ones right now is that you can loop in the realtor and now the realtor knows exactly what you said to the client. Now the realtor is reminded that you are giving better advice than them. And if you honored the realtor at the beginning of the video by you know, saying how great they are, you're, you're constantly reaffirming that, hey, you give me a lead, your customer gets great mortgage options with a video, I make you a hero, I improve your conversion rates, I save you time. And, and then I thought Jeff Nunley's suggestion you know, be more focused, or whether you want to call it page five, you want to call it building the wealth team, you want to call it the circle of cash flow. The bottom line is ask for who's your CPA, who's your financial planner, and if every realtor got that amazing sales experience and they got more leads from you because you're asking all these questions, I have to imagine, you know, that would be good for your business. So, well, and the funny part about it is we all know that those are the people that, really are getting hit up on a regular basis. You know, again, it shouldn't, I, for me personally, I don't think it should be, it's not to be my number one priority to call a CPA, um, a, you know, a list of CPAs or a list of financial advisors today, right? But it's on my list of things to do. And I did talk to, you know, one financial advisor yesterday. I scheduled uh, coffee with another financial advisor yesterday for, uh, for a week after next. And so, you know, those are good people to have in your sphere 
and it's a great question to ask. I think Jeff hit the nail on the head. Yeah. So, so let's. Uh, I, you know, I want to find out what your big strategy is for 2014. But just to set the table before I ask that question, what was your big strategy in 2013 to you know maintain growth after refi? And then let's do make this a two-part question around what's your big idea for this year. Um, I think in 2013 for us really it was um, quickly identifying who are the realtors that we wanted to get in front of and. You know, real estate radio for me is a really, it's an easy way to do it. Not everyone, you know, thinks they can be on a radio show or, or do a radio show, but I really think, um, you know, I, I just do it at a basic level, right? Ron Quintero, when he does his his launch in California where people go there for a couple days, you know, it's, he gives you about, you know, 16,000 different things you could do to, to be successful with it, but in the end, it's, um, and you don't have to have it to get in front of it, but first thing really was to identify the best of the best and then learn what their needs were and then and then just ask. You know, uh, well, one of the things we realized is, is that we met a lot of people, but we didn't actually ask them for the business. So really it's to have a, have a follow-up plan and then make sure that as part of that plan you're asking them if you can be part of their business, asking them how you can help them. I mean, sometimes it's pretty obvious and they go, oh, my gosh, you know what, that sounds, you do that for your people, that would be, you do that for me, and, and they ask you, but... Uh, that's not normal. I mean, 98% of the time, uh, they're telling you how great their lender is or even sometimes how bad their lender is, but then they're still not saying, you know what, maybe this person on the other side of the table um, is the person for us. So really what we did is we decided to get really serious about digging in with realtors, um, you know, try to get, uh, you know, try to get realtors together, uh, you know, more frequently. You know, we do, uh, last year we implemented it with my business development manager, did a, we did a women's event. We had uh, we just did it again in January. We had 330 people there. I think 300 and probably 15 or 20 were uh, women, uh, including my daughters and wife. It was kind of fun to have my kids who were all nervous. I was on stage. But, you know, get out there in front of the community. So we really built um, some brand recognition for our team and for Cobalt uh, by doing, doing events like that. And then also just bringing it down to smaller level. Schedule the realtor coffees. Um, do small happy hours with six to ten realtors, you know, have the two or three realtors we know, but make sure we get the realtors we don't know invited so that we can spend some time uh, with them. But, you know, it wasn't any secret strategy that we don't know. I mean, really, it was a strategy that we all should have been doing last year, but um, but not a lot of people executed on. And so that was what we were really serious about. And, okay. uh, you know, our numbers so, showed it. So last year, it was about, you know, building the database and, you know, the starter to a real, obviously close all loans, so you've got a lot of relationships, but it was really clear on targeting. You use real estate radio as a unique value proposition. Before we do 2014, what, how many realtors are you targeting right now? When you think of, you know, the number of realtors that are on your dream list that you want to get referrals from, how, how many is that that you're targeting? Um, I got two answers to that question, and it's really part of my 2014 strategy. Um, you know, for me personally, um, it's 40 to 50 of the right realtors. Um, you know, I think that that is, that is a really good number. And, and so when I say for me personally, that'll be me and my right hand, David, will help me with that, with those relationships. Um, as an organization, our goal is 150 really solid relationships this year. You know, I think it's a, um, I think if that's a really big number for most people, I think, you know, I just tell people start with, you know, start with five, then go to 10, um, then go to 25. But again, once you know your numbers, then you can get to that, you can get to that point of how many relationships you can focus on. And at some point, you'll decide, hey, I'm getting enough loans from, you know, these relationships. But there's always somebody who's not doing business that's on your, on your team, of your, you know, on your roster of realtors. And so you are always constantly trying to at least recruit, you know, maybe one or two more just because um, someone's going to retire, someone's going to, uh, you know, have some family, you know, get a divorce or something that takes them off of their game, unfortunately. And so uh, that's, you know, that's our focus from a numbers okay. perspective. So you know, breaking that down for everybody, Todd, mega producer with a team, you know, total of 40 to 50 targets, uh, recommends if, you know, you, you have, don't have a team, you know, have five, have 10, have 15. Uh, first of all, one takeaway for a lot of folks, I mean, I, I talk to a lot of loan officers all the time that are just, they're targeting too wide. You know, they, they don't even have a team and they're targeting 200 realtors. 
Uh, so I hope a takeaway for a lot of people there was it's about quality, not about quantity. Uh, and, and it's not, and, and another thing I would add is it's not just important to, to know what their production numbers are. You need to know them to the level so that when you get a meeting, you're demonstrating, I know you. You know, you, so and you, you just can't go too far with showing people that you know them. Make sure you research people on LinkedIn. Make sure that you call common contacts. Look for people that you have in common so that when you go into that meeting, you show them you know them, you ask some great questions, you, tailor, you listen so you can tailor your advice, you teach them something they didn't know, uncover a need that they didn't realize, and then deliver on the promise. I mean, I don't want to overemphasize how simple it is, but it isn't that difficult. So, Todd, what is your 2014 strategy? And by the way, we've got 15 minutes left and about three more questions, so I don't want to rush you, but I did want to give you a, a pulse check on the time. Um, but what is your strategy for 2014? Yeah, I've been kind of long-winded. Sorry about that. No, no, bro, bro, you have not been long-winded. You have not. You've given a lot of great advice. Every time you talk, good stuff comes out. I just wanted to give you a heads up on the time. Um, that's all right. So my, um, you know, we've kind of talked about it. My strategy for 2014 was to really focus on the right relationships, right? You know, Todd Duncan always says, give your best, your, your best. Um, you know, my coach recently told me when we were talking about, you know, the time, you know, how to manage your time and, you know, he gave me a, a Tony Dungy quote, which is something like, you know, I need to treat everybody fairly, but fairly doesn't mean equal. And so um, it was, it's kind of sobering when you actually look at where your, when, when you look at where your relationships come from, right? So, my, you know, I would certainly, if you haven't already done it, I would say go out there and look at where, where really did your business come from last year? And then I would say take it a step deeper if you can. And not only did where did your business come from last year, but then where did the right, where did your, your best business come from? And so, you know, I looked at it last year, and you know, we support um, some big teams, right? We, I've got a big team. Big teams like big teams, right? And so, you know, for us to go after teams is is a is a great strategy for me. Just as if I was an individual loan officer, I would go after individual agents, and I would sell against teams. It's, I mean, it's a pretty easy script, right? I mean, if you are an individual loan officer and you're going to get up against the biggest loan officer team in your city, um, just flat out, you know, tell that person you're going to outservice them, right? I'm one person. You're going to be my, my number one my number one person where there you're going to get um, you're not going to be talking to the leader of the team and you're going to be talking to you know somebody else or that you're going to be you know lower on their totem pole and with me you're going to be number one um, you know sell what you have but for me it was going back into those numbers and looking at my 2013 numbers and then even digging deeper so I had a big team that you know we took a hundred a little over 150 applications with them last year um, and uh, we closed 34 deals with them, but our, it was a really low conversion rate, right? We looked at just from the number of leads we got to the number of applications to the number of closings, and we looked at it and realized that their their quality of their applications was lower. They weren't helping us uh, screen out the you know clients well enough up front for who would qualify and who wouldn't, and they were just you know they were they were going after quantity, not quality. And so for me, for 2014, it's being really clear with those numbers, give our best to our best, and so we went reprioritizing, um, you know, some of those um, relationships that we had where um, where it wasn't as profitable to us, not only from a dollar perspective, but really from a time perspective, where they sucked a lot of time out of us um, because the business that they're doing isn't the best business for us to be part of. And so you have to, it's kind of hard sometimes to take a serious look and go, oh my gosh, I close a lot of deals with these people, um, and then maybe reconsider whether um, in 2014, that that is um, a relationship you should be spending as much time with. And I think if you actually took it a step further and then went through, based on if you were a list of who you think were your best referral sources last year, and you did that first, and then you went in afterwards, and you actually looked at the numbers on it, you would find that oftentimes your most um, profitable relationships, your most enjoyable ones from a transaction, you know, being smooth and being enjoyable and fun, are the people that you spent less time with because they were so easy, but if you actually spent more time, you get a few more deals from them, and by getting a few more deals from them, you'll have more enjoyable transactions going forward. And so that was our that was our big aha. I, I even went as far this week when I prepped for my 125 calls I'm making, as I printed out, um, I got data from who in Arizona has closed um, deals in the last 90 days. I sorted it by number of buyers they represented. I went through, I highlighted all the people we already worked with, which was thankfully a lot. I looked at people who did four or more transactions in the last 90 days, which 
in this business has been a rough 90 days. And then I highlighted in green, these are the people I know, right? These are the people who were at my women's event or these are the people I had at a happy hour. And, hey, this is someone on my radio show that I lost touch with. And uh, that's who I picked up the phone and called to. So it's a matter of also looking back at, you know, who was it you worked with before that maybe you could work with now. And, uh, and just being really clear on those numbers and being laser focused. So, again, not a rocket science like, you know, I created some secret new social media tool that's going to, you know, stop me <laughs> out of Facebook. But, uh, <laughs> no, but, hey, I mean, going deep, I mean, my takeaway so far, you've got great prospecting rhythms that you execute on. You are really intentional around going deep with the right people. Boom. And you have a great sales process that delivers a great sales presentation, which gets to my next question. You know, how do you consistently develop trust with home buyers? You know, what is the, you know, and, and let's just do this within a couple minutes so we can get into the, you know, kind of the, the last question or, and maybe even bring in some, some questions from the audience. But what are, what, what is, what is the essential elements to building trust with home buyers? You know, I think that uh, unfortunately home buyers are still skeptical of us, right? They're, you know, we still don't necessarily have the best reputation overall as an industry. And, um, you know, for us, it's, you know, I would say that we actually have a selling process, uh, which, you know, I, didn't, I hadn't really thought about it until I realized we had one. You know, we, we use scripts up front that answer the questions we know they're going to have. Um, you know, you've got to diffuse those questions. And so, you know, I always believe it boils down to um, up front, it, they just want to know why. You know, what is it that I need to know? Um, take, taking it taking the time to answer the questions. And then in the end, it's showing the differences between us. You know, I don't want to pick on the big banks, but I think we all tend to sometimes, or we're just the newer, you know, the uneducated loan officer, or the loan officer's too busy to take the time. It's also show that you're an expert, right? And, and, and certainly that's where, uh, that's where edge as a tool comes in for us, is to be able to show that we, we truly are differentiating ourselves. I mean, uh, you know, the old adage of, I don't send out good faith estimates, I never have, never will. Because um, that's what the competition, you know, that's what the competition will do, and they just don't take the time to explain the why. I was referred to uh, a uh, pastor who's moving to town yesterday, and I and I spoke to him briefly. And, and long story short, was um, he'd already been referred by his realtor to somebody else, and you know, through up his brother, the title company. I, you know, the referral landed on my lap, and he went under contract on Sunday, and he just said, "Hey, I don't even know why this loan officer picked this loan for me. Is this the best loan?" you know, that I, you know, that I can get. And, uh, you know, in today's day and age, I just said, well, let's talk through it. And so um, I sent him an email last night because he hasn't been able to get me all the details on it, but I kind of gave him a, here's what I think, you know, you're getting and why, and then here's why the, you know, other, there's a couple of other loan programs that I will review once I get your information. And, you know, I'll flat out obviously put that into Edge and show the program that they're, that they're recommending to him, which happens to have higher fees and a higher rate but a lower down payment, and I'm going to compare that to with his high credit score, you know, a loan with uh, an FHA loan that's got normal fees and normal rates, and then I'll also compare it to a 5% down, you know, conventional loan with upfront versus monthly mortgage insurance to show him, um, you know, because really what's most important to him is not his down payment, which is what the loan is he was being sold. Um, what's most important to him is his monthly payment going forward, because as a pastor, he's not going to ever, you know, have huge increases in his income, and so you know, it comes back to that same old thing we've heard forever is take the time to understand what's important to your client, show them that you're an expert, and, uh, and then answer the questions. I would say you got to know the why behind it. That's beautiful. So real straightforward, tailor, teach, and control. You know, the, the paradigm of the challenger sales process, Todd is absolutely a challenger sales rep. Todd has a great borrower presentation. I, I am, I've got a lot of people who want to know what a conversation sounds like with you when you talk to a realtor, you know, to get a meeting. But before I do that, I, I want to ask one more, um, you know, just question that was part of our prep to really bring the genius out of what you're doing. But what, what does make you unique in your marketplace? You know, and you don't have to list things in any particular order, but everybody is searching for, I want to be unique. I want to deliver something special and valuable. What, what are the, some of the first things that come to mind for you? You know, I think it's we, we really strive to add value. We're trying to do things a little bit different than um, other folks in our marketplace, um, you know, like our um, women's event. You know, we did a Darren Hardy event. I mean, just try to do things that are 
that other people aren't doing in the marketplace that add value to agents. Um, I work with a lot of Keller Williams agents, and I've been to a lot of Keller Williams classes alongside of them. And so I've really taken the time to understand the culture of the people that I'm working with, and, and that's really what they want. I mean, they want somebody. I talked to um, somebody yesterday who um, is a team leader in a Keller Williams office, and you know, flat out she just said, well, I just wish that you were our lending partner in our office because you get us and they don't. Um, and so I think it's that, that's really it, is we've just taken the time to understand the people we do business with and we've added value. Well, that's beautiful and straightforward. You're obviously a leader in your community. You obviously are doing a lot of things right. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the promises that we make because I think it will, it will kind of set up this last question. But, you know, I'm pulling some of these scripts out from past interviews. This was something that Jeremy put as part of his five questions. If I could show you how to close a few extra loans, would that be interesting? This, was, this came out of the, the um, Tom Ferry conversation. If referring me a home buyer would actually increase your conversion ratio, would that be interesting? Jeff Nunley, uh, you know, if I could turn your referrals into extra introductions to other referral partners, would that be interesting? So, so Todd, what do you, what is your unique promise? And uh, and I want to also throw it out to the community, and maybe when you um, add your takeaways in our LinkedIn community, you know, what are your big promises that you're making that really set the stage for your unique value proposition? So, Todd, what comes to mind for you? You know, I, I always start with we're not going to make you look bad, right? I mean, that's again sounds really cheesy. I don't, I don't know that there's any one big promise that I that I give everyone. I think I give up lots of little commitments. You know, we're not going to make you look bad. Um, just like what Tom Ferry said, I always say we'll help you convert more deals because our lead follow up is great. We're going to follow up more than they're going to follow up. Um, I always tell them that we're going to close their deals well because we're going to pre underwrite them up front, and so we're going to fare it out, and we're not going to waste their time by putting an unqualified buyer in the car. Um, and then I always tell them that we're just gonna we're gonna communicate at such a high level um, that they're never really gonna have to be wondering you know what's you know what's going on we're not you know we're not a black hole um, and then in the end we don't make promises about introducing them to other people we don't make promises about adding value with um, you know with great events or, or doing little you know nice things you know here and there just from a you know birthday call and that you know the little kind of stuff that I think oftentimes we're so busy we forget about. Um, you know, we just try to show them with actions that, you know, we really do care and that our goal is to be a true partner, you know, going forward because, you know, the, the best part about it, like I said, is, you know, Harp Year was a crazy year, but we didn't lose relationships that year um, where I know so many people who uh, just flat out told me, I don't really care about those people, and, uh, and it showed. They didn't, uh, well, uh, they didn't do it. I, I talked to a huge producer um, the other day who called me, ironically, about the radio, and um, he had done, you know, almost $150 million last year. And he always joked, he said, I wonder what would happen if I stopped um, loving my database um, at, at any point in my career. And he goes, you know, I figured it out, January 2014, um, where, you know, he went from only taking 50 applications a month and he was only taking 15. And so, um, you know, that's it. Don't, you know, don't promise him, show him. Beautiful. Well, again, you probably have a great sales process. It's probably really clear I'm going to make you look good. It's probably really clear with how detailed and thorough you are that you're going to vet out problems. But the unique promise you're making, it is you're going to get better conversion rates. So so how do you do that? And everybody on this call, there's a lot of ways that you could do it. I would say that a fee worksheet, if this is what your mortgage experience looks like when you get a referral, that's probably not going to demonstrate how you're going to get better conversion rate. If you're still doing yellow pads, that's probably not the way to do it. But Everybody on this call, you're a Mortgage Coach member. Make sure you're sending out a great email with an interactive link. Make sure that you're training and teaching them that it's mobile optimized as Mortgage Coach members. The home buyer can see the mortgage options. The realtor can see the mortgage options. In fact, make sure you have your iPad or your iPhone or your Android device with you so you can show a realtor you've got a great mortgage experience. So everybody on this call, you all have that in common that you have these tools. Make sure that you're CCing the realtor. My homework assignment for everybody is to CC your realtor on your next home buying lead so that you can demonstrate your conversion rate. Again, I know I've been hitting this hard for week after week. Uh, we're getting to the top of the call. I want to remind everybody we're here to help you. Just give us a call. Go and add your takeaway from today's call in our LinkedIn Mortgage Coach community. Make sure you're getting our emails around 
all of the events that we're having. Every Tuesday at 9, we're sharing ideas, we're profiling leaders. I'm going to have um, Phil Black, former Navy SEAL. He was on the Shark Tank a few weeks ago. He's going to bring to the mortgage coach community what he learned as a Navy SEAL, what he learned from the Shark Tank experience, and why that's relevant to you as a mortgage professional. I personally think that's going to be a pretty fun call next Tuesday at 9 o'clock. I want to remind you that this call was recorded and within a couple hours will be posted. Uh, remind you that this Tuesday we are going to have a 9 o'clock teaching and training call. So, you know, if you're, if you're having challenges with anything in mortgage coach land, whether it's getting rate watch installed, whether it's creating videos, whether it's how to do an FHA versus a conventional, whatever tactics and strategies, we're here to teach and train you. So, Todd, uh, as we wrap up the call, any party words of wisdom or thoughts that you want to share with everybody? No, I just want to say thanks. I really, uh, like I say, it's an honor to be on the call and, you know, hopefully uh, added some value anywhere. But, you know, I'm more than happy to answer any questions as a follow-up, you know, track me down. I guess, as uh, Dave said, Google me. I'm more than happy to uh, uh, connect because in the end, you know, I know I've got something to learn from each and everyone who was on this call and, and certainly would uh, love the opportunity to add any other value that I can. Hey, I, I had enough people ask for your scripting, so um, even though we're at the top of the hour, I did put the survey question out there. would love to know what you guys thought of the call. If you don't mind, let's do a one to two minute, how are you going to get a meeting with a realtor role play? Do you mind if you and I do that as just a, a last little bonus gift for everybody? You know, sure, sure. And I would say it's, um, for me, it comes in so many, you know, so many different directions. Um, but I'll give one I used yesterday because... Um, as I said, I went through and I picked out people, you know, again, I, I picked out people I knew, right? I didn't, everyone that I was planning on calling this week was somebody who um, has been, you know, A is producing, and then B is someone that I've been exposed to at some point, and that when I call, it's a, it's a warm call, and I can literally just say, hey, can we get together and have a cup of coffee? Um, I would say, so let me use kind of that script, because I had a guy, he sold 14, uh, 14 homes in the last three months, and he's somebody who I had on my radio show. Um, we sort of started working together, but really not. You know, I didn't do a great job of my follow-up. And so when I called him yesterday, I just um, answered the phone. I said, hey, um, just wanted to follow up. I, I was uh, looking on Facebook this morning, and I saw that post you made. And I just thought, you know what, I haven't caught up with you in a long time. Would it be possible just to get together for a cup of coffee? And so it wasn't any crazy script of, you know, a any promises and I was sort of shocked when he said, well, no, not until I give you five deals. And he really did say that. He says, you do so much for the community. I want to give you five deals first. And I said, no, no, that's okay. Let's have a cup of coffee. Um, so that was sort of a, a give me to somebody that I knew. Um, the other, the, the call that I made, which was a 100% a cold call yesterday, was there was a real estate agent forum, and someone had made a post um, pretty much – um, they were all making fun of a, a guy who's got a really positive attitude. He's trying to grow the biggest team in Arizona, and he had sent out a recruiting text, and everyone was just, you know, they were all laughing at him. There's like 60 threads, you know, 60 comments in this, in this Facebook thread, and this guy got on there and defended him. And um, I loved this guy's defense. What he said in there was genius. So I friended him on Facebook, and I've been watching him for the last, you know, week, two weeks, and he posed really positive things. And that was my, that was my pitch. I called him up. His name his name's Daniel, goes by Danny. I didn't know that. I said, hey, Daniel, Todd Books fan at Cobalt Mortgage, how are you? And he's like, good. And you could tell right there he thought this was just a mortgage guy. I hit him up. I go, I know. Last thing you want to hear is from another mortgage guy because I normally make fun of myself. Um, I said, but you know what? We recently became friends on Facebook. I saw, you, I saw that, that response that you made about this guy. And um, as corny as it sounds, you're a guy that I want to meet. Would you be willing to have a cup of coffee with me? Um, and he kind of hesitated. He sounded a little distracted. And he goes, you know, yeah. I mean, that was really that was really it. And I probably would have said, if he would have said no or he would have given me hesitation, I probably would have just pushed him a little more and said, well, you know, are you, you know, I would have used one of the, are you, you know, do you really have all, do you have all business that you can handle right now? And I'm sure he would have said no, um, which I already knew. I mean, he did 13 transactions this year. I didn't go into the conversation blind. I knew what his business was. And, uh, and then I would have um, just said, you know what, I work with some of the, you know, I work with some of the top producers that you know. I already knew who I already knew who was commenting on his Facebook um, posts. I knew who likes his Facebook posts. And so, you know, I, I was gonna, I would have weaved in some of the people that we know in common that that I either know really well or I work with, and I would have used that as my leverage in. But, you know, the funny part is, is we're all scared to call new people, and um, 
most of the time you can get your foot in the door um, by just calling and um, and give it a shot, right? Worst is they yeah. say no. I get turned well, down a lot too. I'm I'm really glad we kept it going for this little bonus five minutes. So folks, you know, he showed them that he knew them. You know, I mean, and he and he kept it real, kept it authentic. You know, remember when you're calling people, that's not the time for all those questions or big promises. You know, those are things for once you're in the meeting. I want to, I do want to emphasize and remind everybody because I do think too many loan officers they say too much to get the meeting. You know, you don't need to say too much to get the meeting. You just need to to say the right things in a very, you know, intentional and in a very transparent, authentic way. So, uh, Todd, it's. I, I can see clearly why you're so successful. Thanks for all the time you took on the Mortgage Coach community. Can't wait to have you back in as a guest. And everybody, I hope this was a valuable hour of your time. Totally my pleasure. Thanks again for having me on. All right. Take care, everybody. Have an awesome week. See you next week with Phil Black. Bye now.